I'm back with uh, Chloe Cole, activist, former trans kid. She you can follow her on social media at Twitter at ChooseCHOOO Cole. Uh, Chloe, you were talking about the factors that led you to begin to think I might be a boy. What did you do next? Did you go to therapists or counselors? How did you uh, go through this process and what was that process like? Right. So when I was about 12 and a half was when I decided that I was a boy and I wasn't a daughter, but son to my mom and dad. And I quietly started to socially transition by cutting my hair shorter and wearing my boy's clothing and trying to change my mannerisms to match that of my older brothers and my male peers. And after a few months of doing this without really telling anybody, um, I decided that I wanted to tell my parents. I wanted to start pursuing not only social transition, but medical transition as well, because I, from the research that I had done, both the information that I'd gotten from the transgender, transgender community itself and actual medical resources, including from my own healthcare provider, it seemed to all push transition as the only means of treating the distress I had around my gender dysphoria. And after I came out to my parents, they decided that they would send me to a therapist to, because they didn't, they were just regular people. They didn't know how to, how to react to this or how to, what to do about this. And they thought like my feelings around this would be sorted out that the, that the underlying issues I had would be treated, but this is not what happened when I went to that appointment. I was immediately given affirmation in my gender identity and I was treated as and referred to as an actual boy. And I, I, I wasn't, I wouldn't use, I wouldn't really say that I was forced into it by the doctors. I was the one pushing for these treatments because I thought that it was the only path forward and nobody, I was never really given any other option. So the treatment process was completely patient led. After a while of, after a while, my parents started to, to get concerned as to why I was pushing for medicalization so much. And in an appointment they had with my, I believe it must have been my therapist and gender specialist, because I, I switched between several, several doctors and specialists throughout the years. So I can't really remember, remember well, and I don't think I was there for this appointment, but they, completely dismissed my parents' concerns and they didn't give them any other option but to transition me um, under the pretense that if I wasn't allowed to transition, then it was very likely that I would kill myself. They gave them the ultimatum of you're either going to have a dead daughter or a live son. And it was just six months after my diagnosis for gender dysphoria that I began puberty blockers and a month later testosterone when I was 13. Now you go through this process and how did you feel at the end? I mean, did, did you, did you, did you spend some years or did you spend a period of time where you're like, Hey, I'm now a boy because I've gone through this, this medical transition and I am now basically a guy. Right. So during the period that I was, that I was just on the blockers, I was very lethargic and it just felt horrible. Like it was, it was giving me hot flashes and menopausal symptoms when I was just a few years into puberty. I wasn't even a teenager yet. And it just pushed me into the next treatment, which was testosterone, which it felt great. Like I felt energetic, I felt confident, and I started to, to gain muscle and become more fit. And I mean, it, there was that aspect of feeling euphoric because I thought of it as, I mean, not only was I taking steroids, but I felt like this is a big step in the right direction for me. And there was, I'd say there was a bit of a honeymoon period, which wore off after a few years. And I, at 15, after just, just after my sophomore year of high school ended was when I underwent the double mastectomy. And there was a bit of a period of euphoria after this as well. I, I really thought of myself to be like any other boy my age. 
I really fell into that delusion that I was actually the opposite sex. And I really wanted my body to reflect that. And I was looking forward to the, to after the post-op process and the healing, being able to, to go out with my shirt and to, to swim, to, to work out, go on runs without any worry. And unfortunately, this is not what happened. The post-op period was, was very rough and the regret started to set in. And it wasn't until after I took a class in psychology in my junior year when I learned about child development and, and parenting that I realized that I had a maternal instinct. I wanted to become a mother someday and that by living as a man, by taking these treatments, I was hindering myself. I was losing opportunities as an adult because of a decision that I made as a child. And I never would know what it's like to, to breastfeed my children ever. Let's take a pause, Chloe. I want to go further into this process and also what led you to make another fateful decision, which is to transition or detransition uh, back. Um, we'll be right back. 